Hi, I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and welcome back to the Hive. In a previous video, I unboxed and installed this Arlec 9 watt CCT and RGB downlight using the Tuya Smart App and we tried to integrate it into Home Assistant but ran into a compatibility issue where we can't properly control the light fixture without creating scenes. So in this video, I'm going to open up this control box like I did with the data downlights in the kitchen and we'll use the serial flashing method to get Tasmoda installed. So let's get started. Okay, so we're out in the workshop now and I have the controller box here in front of me uh, and we're gonna open this up and take a look inside. Now, uh, full disclosure, I have already opened one of these up to uh, help identify and I've even already flashed it uh, and done some testing to make sure that I find the right template. Um, but this time I'm filming so that you can come on the journey with me. Uh, so first we will undo the two screws at the LED end and I'll put that in my ice cube tray over here and we'll undo the two screws at the AC end and put that into my ice cube tray over here flip over the box grab a flathead screwdriver and pop the back off the control box. Okay, so we're looking at the unit here. This is the control board. And if we take a close look here, we can see that this is the two-year module TYWE5P. And uh, you can just kind of maybe make out if I get the light right here, you might be able to make out um, some of the uh, pin assignments here. We've got TX0, uh, RX0, ground, and 3V3. Uh, and uh, on the other side, the third pin in is GPIO0. Now, I've also confirmed that because I signed up for a two-year developer account, uh, and I was able to download the data sheet uh, and we've found that TX0, RX0, ground, 3V3, and GPIO0. And again, that's the TYWE5P module. Uh, it is worth uh, signing up for the two-year developer account if you are going to be doing serial flashing of any two-year devices. Uh, having access to the data sheets does help quite a lot. So we will just tidy up our bench here. I've already got my soldering iron nice and hot. And I'm going to grab my leads here. And once again, I'm just tacking these on. I do want to be very careful about that ground and that RX pin because they're very close together. And so now that those are tacked on, I'm going to grab my USB module and I've already got those cables plugged in. And over on my laptop here, I have got Tasmatizer running uh, and I'm going to grab my second ground here. Make sure that that is on our, th our GPIO zero. I'm just gonna touch this GPI zero with a little solder to make sure that I can get good contact. So what I'm going to do, I'm holding the ground pin onto GPI zero and I am plugging in the USB key. So over on my laptop here, I've got Tasmatizer running. I'm just going to refresh that, make sure we're on the TTY USB serial. 
I'm going to back up the original firmware. Now I do already have a backup of the firmware from the other device that I flashed, but I'm going to back it up again just to be certain. Uh, and one of the handy things about having the data sheet is knowing that this is a one meg flash. Uh, we're going to put release 920 on here. Uh, we've got the Tasmoda bin there. If we wanted to, we could change it to one of the others, but we'll just go with the regular Tasmoda bin. Uh, we don't have a self-resetting device and we're going to erase before flashing. So I'll hit Tasmatize and we should start downloading the 920 release and then backing up the device. Okay, so now we need to power cycle the device. So I need to have the ground pin onto GPIO zero. And I'm going to unplug, replug the USB. Might just do that again, because I don't think I got it on there. Okay, so we've done that and I'll hit okay. So while I'm waiting for that to flash, I'm going to start pulling apart the other two control boxes uh, because I have two more of these lights to tasmatize. Okay, so that pretty quickly came back up and said process successful and to power cycle the device. So I will do exactly that and we don't need to hold GPIO zero to ground this time. So we'll hit OK on that. And once that comes back up, we should be able to click on other networks in our Wi-Fi menu here. And it might take a moment to show up the Tasmoda Wi-Fi. And I'm just gonna take a quick screenshot of that so that I can find that ID. We'll connect to that Tasmoda network and scan for Wi-Fi networks. And we'll connect to the force and I'll type in the password. And I'll just double check that that's right. Okay, so while that's restarting and connecting to our network, I'm going to open up LandScan. And I'm going to start land scan. And I'm going to use the search here and search for Tasmota. And I'm going to check my screenshot. I'm looking for E-A-E-D-O-B. E-A-E-D-0-B. Okay, so we've got 192.168.1.189. So I'm going to open up Edge here. You can do it in Chrome or Safari, but just for cleanliness, I'll use Edge. And we're going to go to 192.168.1.189. And there we have it. We've got the unit there. Now we're going to go to Black Adder Tasmoda and so templates.blackadder.com, uh, Bing. Uh, and what I'm going to do is go to search and search for Arlec. And I'm going to search for this Arlec Smart 9 Watt CCT downlight. Now I was very surprised to find out with the first unit that even though these units are CCT and RGB, that this template works for the CCT and RGB ones, even though it's only for CCT. So I'll go back to Tasmoda and go to configuration, configure other, and I'm going to paste the template in there. Tick activate. I'm going to give it a name. Now this module is dining room four. So dining four. And I'm going to hit save. It's going to restart. Okay, and so now we have 
the configuration here. I still need to go to configuration, configure MUQTT and put in 192.168.1.20 as my host. And we can leave all the other things unchanged. I'll click save. And the unit's going to restart again. And then what we should see is we will have that unit in our Home Assistant. And we'll click yes to staying logged in. So we should be able to scroll through here and we should find this light section here. And we've got Dining 3 and Dining 4. Now this one was Dining 4. So uh, Dining 3 was the one that I set up earlier. Now obviously we're not gonna be able to turn this on right now because it's only running on 3.3 volts from the USB to serial adapter. So I'm going to uh, flash the other two, put everything back together, and then we will test them uh, back on the set wall in the dining room, and then we'll put them all back in the ceiling uh, and see how they look. So just wanna to touch base uh, again, now that um, I'm on the last uh, unit here. Um, what I was doing before was I was using the um, tinned wire, just uh, the wires, um, and I tinned them uh, to connect onto these pins. And then I had a realization that I've got these wires terminated with DuPont connectors, which are nice and solid. They don't have stray strands everywhere like uh, these sometimes get. I was actually having a bit of trouble with uh, this ground lead, um, which you might be able to see there, has started to spread out a bit. And because of the uh, pitch that we're soldering at, like there's not a lot of space in between these in between these pins here. So I was getting a bit worried about shorting between either the 3B3 or the uh, RX on here when we were uh, soldering using the just the uh, the tinned cable, um, and so by using the Dupont connectors, tinning them with some flux and some solder, um, and just soldering the Dupont connectors directly to the contacts on the board, I found that that's a lot easier for me to get the connections that I need. Uh, and I've even soldered directly to the GPIO zero pin here, and I can disconnect GPIO zero from this. Uh, three pin header that I've got here, this connector that um, just is a ground bridge. So what I can now do is go back over to the computer, plug this in, and I don't need to be concerned whether or not I've got the GPIO zero connected properly. And I know that my connections here are not bridged either. So now we are back in the dining room and I've installed three of the four lights back in the ceiling. And I've got this one, number one, here in the set wall for validation. So we're back over to Home Assistant and we can see in the light section here, we have one, two, three, and four dining room lights. And we can turn them on and off and I can tell you that they do turn on and off and we've also got number one here which turns on and off and if we drill into dining room number one we see that we can start playing around we've got our color temperature and we've got our white value which just is mostly a dimmer and we've also got our color wheel and we've got our pre-programmed effects down here we'll put that back onto none and we'll go back to a white color and go over to a nice warm white. And the other thing that I noticed is that if we drop the brightness down really very low, so that's at about 10%, it actually dims the light below about 50%, which is what was happening with the Two Year Smart app. So I'm very happy that we now have much better control over this light. So we've managed to get Tasmoda onto these lights, which I've been wanting to do ever since I flashed the data lights. Removing the lights from the two-year cloud means I've got much better control over them from Home Assistant, 
and I've removed the latency issues that we see by using cloud services. Not to mention with local control, if there's a problem with the internet connection, I can still control my lights. I'll be adding some automations to these lights in the future and I still need to make sure that they're set up properly in the Amazon Alexa app as well, which I'll cover in another video. I'm really happy with the results of flashing these lights and these ones were a lot easier to solder to than the Dita branded ones. That's it for this video. I do hope you got something out of it for your own home automation journey. If you did like the video, give it a thumbs up down below. And if you wanna see more like it, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon as well to get notified when I release new videos. Lastly, these videos are not sponsored. So if you like what I'm doing here and wanna help out by supporting the channel, there's a buy me a coffee link in the video description below. Contributions through the buy me a coffee link help me to make more and better content for you to enjoy. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.